Once upon a time there was a guy. Today we're diving into the story of a young man who's been trying to wake up his hidden powers for years. He's worked so hard, but nothing seems to work. It's like he's stuck in a never-ending dream. But then, something incredible happens. Our hero is transported back in time to an age of heroes. He's given a second chance to make his dreams come true and change a world that's been unfair to him. Let's pick up the story in the year 2020, a year that was a disaster for humanity. A mysterious dimension called a gate opened up, connecting our world to another one. The appearance of this gate caused panic and tension because everyone was worried about the danger it might bring. Governments sent soldiers to investigate, but none of them returned. From the other side of the gate, monstrous creatures started attacking, threatening humanity's existence. But amidst all this chaos, a glimmer of hope emerged. Some lucky individuals received special gifts from powerful beings known as sponsors. These gifted individuals were called hunters, and they possessed incredible powers. Thanks to the Enter, humanity had a fighting chance against the monsters, and extinction wasn't imminent. Among the many Enter, there was one who stood out, the Demon King. Unlike other Enter who relied on their sponsors, the Demon King had the unique ability to grow stronger through his own efforts. His power was so immense that it scared the twelve self-proclaimed gods who ruled this world. In a desperate move, they erased the Demon King from existence and created a place called Eden, where they appointed the Enter as the new rulers of humanity. Those who couldn't become hunters were cast aside as slaves, and life continued under the rule of the Enter. It was a harsh world where those who hadn't awakened their powers were treated like garbage. Now let's focus on our protagonist, Lee Jun Young. He's been training tirelessly with his teacher, Xiong Gu. Despite a year of effort, Lee Jun Young still hasn't awakened his powers. He knows the odds are against him, but he refuses to give up. He believes that with enough dedication he can catch the attention of a sponsor and finally awaken. Yet, as the days pass, doubt gnaws at him, and he wonders if all his hard work is in vain. Lee Jun Young wanted to give up, but Xiong Gu immediately stopped him, reminding him of his promise to become a hunter and change the system of discrimination. Xiong Gu guaranteed that Lee Jun Young could become a hunter someday, and told him to always carry the books left by his parents. Those books were crucial, containing the autobiography of the Demon King. Even though Lee Jun Young couldn't understand the book, he carried it everywhere as per his teacher's order. During their conversation, there was a sudden attack from above. Thankfully, Xiong Gu's trained instincts saved Lee Jun Young. The attacker turned out to be a woman named Athena, an Eden member and one of the Twelve Gods. Lee Jun Young was astonished and wondered why Athena, of all people, had come to attack him. Before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day. What man was the most crazy and out of this world? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out. Now back to the recap. Athena's reason for being there was to find the Demon King's autobiography. Her strength was terrifying and it made Lee Jun Young feel helpless. Athena assumed that Xiong Gu had the book, but sensed a trace of magic from Lee Jun Young. Suspicious, she demanded that he hand over the hidden items. Athena was furious that a mere human had read the book and decided to kill Lee Jun Young as punishment. Just as Athena was about to attack, Xiong Gu intervened and stopped her. Lee Jun Young was left in awe, wondering who Xiong Gu was and how he could overpower Athena, one of the twelve gods. Xiong Gu asked Lee Jun Young seriously if he believed he could change the world system with great power. At first, Lee Jun Young doubted it, given Eden's power, but his teacher's gaze gave him confidence and he promised to keep that pledge. Xiong Gu smiled and, with a swift strike of his sword, killed Li Junyong. As Li Junyong faced imminent death, Xiong Gu told him to be nice if they were to meet again. Those words echoed in Li Junyong's mind as he entered a room filled with a yellow and white light. Suddenly he found himself in a mysterious place, utterly unfamiliar. When he feels his body, Li Junyong senses that he's become stronger. This means he's awakened as a hunter. As he looks around, he realises he's inside a gate, just as he thought. Before long, he encounters a goblin. Li Jun Young gets scared at first, but he remembers Xiong Gu's advice and decides to attack. Surprisingly, his punch alone kills the goblin. Li Jun Young can't believe how strong he's become. After his first successful goblin kill, a system pop-up appears, saying that the Sky of Apocalypse is watching him. This reminds him of the Demon King, but his fun is cut short when a horde of goblins, including a goblin chieftain, shows up. Li Jun Young is terrified, but he won't give up. He fights back even though the chieftain is as tough as an A-rank sea hunter, Li Jun Young doesn't back down. As he defeats several goblins, he levels up. In the heat of battle, the Sky of Apocalypse supports him by giving him a staff with firepower. Li Jun Young uses it to stab the goblin chieftain and levels up again. CH4. He's exhausted, and the next thing he knows, he's in a hospital. A nurse tells him he's lucky to be saved by a guild. 
It's the year 2022. Lee Jun Young is shocked and confused. He didn't expect to be thrown back in time. He wonders where he is and what's going on. The nurse explains that many special hunters have risen to fame, and this year is known as the Year of Heroes. Lee Jun Young realises this is the perfect time to change the discrimination system. To do that, he needs to get stronger and heal first. Later that afternoon, someone comes to meet him. That man was a member of the association named Kim. Kim's arrival here is to ask who he is and why he entered the gate alone. Of course, the reason why Kim was interested in him was because after looking for information about Lee Jun Young, none of the data matched. Lee Jun Young said that suddenly he could be there. He did not explain that he was thrown into the past and only testified that he only remembered when he woke up there and did not remember anything about his past. Hearing this makes Kim interested and they will meet another day. After Kim left, Lee Jun Young checked his status and unexpectedly his status was the same as Demon King, namely player. Seeing this, Lee Jun Young was very happy because with this, his plan could be achieved. After several days in the hospital, finally, Lee Jun Young was allowed to go home. Then, after walking around, Lee Jun Young didn't expect to be in the Age of Heroes and in the centre of the city where the Storm Hunters gathered. Shortly after that, he was approached by Kim and invited him to the association. Kim would provide a place to live there and create a new identity for him. Kim also congratulated Lee Jun Young for becoming a hunter, one of the special hunters who succeeded in occupying Hunter Rank C in his awakening. People like John would likely get special treatment from the association, considering that people who are born like Lee Jun Young will definitely become strong hunters in the future. After arriving there, Lee Jun Young was surprised, because he was given a good place to live in some qualified facilities. Besides that, Kim also said that there was someone who wanted to meet Lee Jun Young. Finding this, Lee Jun Young was shocked and asked who was someone who knew him. When he met this person, he was the guildmaster of the League Guild, named Xiongu. Seeing this, Lee Jun Young couldn't believe he could meet his teacher. Here, Lee Jun Young just remembered what his teacher said in the future, before he was thrown into the past. When concluding this, Lee Jun Young thought that this was made by Xiong Gu, and of course the reason Xiong Gu sent him to the past asked him to keep his promise to change the world system for the better and for peace. Now, because Lee Jun Young couldn't explain all of this here, he immediately had a deep sense of gratitude for Xiong Gu for saving him. The next day, after resting, John was told to go and follow the Novice Hunter tutorial. This activity is made to find talented young hunters who can be recruited by the association to help bring this world to peace. The trainer who will oversee this tutorial is a B-rank hunter named Bai Sang Su. It can be seen that the hunters are very enthusiastic about the activities this time because if they pass, they can easily enter the main guilds in this country before doing the tutorial. Sang Su asked several hunters about the sponsor's purpose in granting great power to them. However, the hunters couldn't answer because the sponsor's intentions remained a mystery and there was no established nation yet. At that moment, Lee Jun Yong shared his thoughts, suggesting that sponsors might provide power for entertainment, similar to how characters grow in a game world. Lee Jun Yong's insight came after witnessing the Demon King's struggle. Soon, the tutorial began a straightforward exercise where hunters would face prepared goblins one by one. This worried many hunters, as they couldn't imagine taking on the goblins alone. Sang Su reassured them, explaining that the goblins were under some form of control and couldn't harm humans. He promised to intervene if anything unexpected occurred. The official tutorial commenced, with some hunters succeeding while others failed. Now it was Lee Jun Young's turn, and the goblin he faced was no ordinary one, it was an orc. This surprised everyone as they couldn't fathom how a novice hunter could defeat such a formidable monster. Sang Su questioned why Lee Jun Young had to confront a rank level goblin considering his novice status. However, they remembered that Lee Jun Young had previously defeated a dungeon boss on his own, showcasing his exceptional strength. As the duel began, Lee Jun Young attacked the orc with his spear. His spear managed to pierce the orc's arm, but to everyone's amazement, it had no effect. The orc retaliated, and it seemed like Lee Jun Young was in trouble. However, Lee Jun Young displayed remarkable agility, avoiding the orc's attacks and eventually overpowering it. Witnessing this feat left everyone in disbelief. They couldn't fathom how a novice hunter had an sea level orc. Lee Jun Young's strength was so great that his spear weapon shattered due to the immense force. In the afternoon, Lee Jun Young was visited by Xiong Gu and Kim. The association party pointed to Kim as an assistant from Legion. Xiong Gu offered Lee a chance to join the Legion Guild, but Lee Jun Young declined the offer, not out of arrogance but because it would disrupt his plans. He couldn't afford to get too close to Xiong Gu or others, as it would complicate his future plans. 
What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps.